Hello everyone. Welcome to our course on nonlinear control. Um, we are into the final week of this course, and uh, uh, we are going to start off today with uh, the material on finite time stability. So, so we've already done uh, notions of asymptotic stability, asymptotic convergence and already seen many many methods to actually guarantee um, asymptotic stability uh, for several nonlinear systems and um, we've identified analysis methods and as well as um, you know methods for construction of control so now we are sort of going to look at uh, notions of finite time convergence because as of uh, until now we have always been focused on uh, convergence that is asymptotic that is to say in infinite time um, however there is a lot of value uh, and importance uh, to studying finite time convergence as well one of the reasons obviously is that um, a lot of real application problems um, do not obviously have infinite time uh, to perform a specific task there is a certain fixed amount of time or a finite amount of time and therefore uh, studying notions of finite time stability makes sense and it's also known that uh, these kind of um, finite time convergence controls also um, help reject disturbance yeah so this is also something that we will look at uh, to an extent uh, as uh, as part of this week's lectures yeah so, uh, so starting with finite time stability, this is a notion that was very, very nicely introduced by a, a very um, prominent researcher in India itself, uh, which is Sanjay Bhatt. And, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to say I actually know him very well. And um, he actually worked during his uh, PhD a long, long time ago on establishing some very valuable notions of um, finite time uh, stability although there were others before him who um, did a little bit of work on finite time stability um, but the notions were not uh, very properly formalized and i would say um, that sanjay bhatt can be um, um, credited to actually formalizing notions of finite time stability the way we look at it now yeah so it's it's uh, that's quite um, good to know that um, one of our very own researchers um, has uh, been um, you know the originator of a particular area of control itself yeah um, so these are the two references that you see here that we will be using both as you can see are from Sanjay Bhatt along with his PhD advisor at the time Dennis Bernstein who is still an active researcher in Michigan Ann Arbor. Uh, Sanjay Bhatt is of course in India and uh, part of TCS research. Um, so these are the two sort of articles that we are going to focus on to uh, sort of formalize these notions. And these articles are already mentioned here. One is the on the Lyapunov analysis of finite time differential equations. And you can see this is in the Proceedings of American Control Conference from 1995. So this is already quite a while ago. And this is uh, the second article is the more formal journal article um, on and, and named as finite time stability of continuous autonomous systems. And this was published in the CM Journal of uh, Control and Optimization in uh, 2000. Yeah, so uh, quite old material in some sense. Yeah, but then this has been the basis of a lot of new uh, developments. All right, it's been the basis of a lot of several several new developments. So this is what we are going to start talking about today. Yeah, so let's see um, now what is exactly uh, i mean before we even start talking about finite time stability and so on we want to um, 
understand a few things you know understand a few differences as to uh, what we were looking at before the kind of systems we were looking at before versus the kind of systems we are looking at now um, until now so i will say until now always looking at lipschitz dynamics what is lipschitz dynamics i'm going to sort of uh, write a few things so we've been looking at uh, i mean i'm not even going to look at uh, a control system right now i'm just going to look at a dynamical system and an autonomous nonlinear dynamical system at that right so suppose you have a system of the form x dot equals to fx um, and you know suppose this is i mean i can always have some kind of a neighborhood on which this function is defined so it maps vectors in rn to rn and uh, and and then of course we have typical assumptions that f is lipschitz on in something that we denote as d and zero the origin of course contained in d because we are usually interested in the stability of the origin right and there is of course some initial condition because it is a autonomous system that we are looking at so there is no explicit time dependence so it's not of much concern for us to have uh, initial conditions that are non-zero so zero initial condition is quite okay right so what was this lipschitz condition right so we um, I have not formally looked at this but basically this condition uh, guarantees so i will say that this condition guarantees existence of unique solutions hmm? so there are two things yeah here we have existence of a solution and uniqueness of a solution so there are two things here okay so rather important to understand it's not just one or the other it says that the solutions exist and as well as they're unique yeah on the other hand it is well known that if f is c0 which is continuous then solutions exist and they are not necessarily unique okay so obviously whenever i'm saying something is continuous something is lipschitz i'm always talking about a domain d right i mean it cannot typically you can't say that the function is same because these are non-linear functions so it may not be very nicely behaved everywhere so so i hope one thing is sort of clear that uh, c0 is a subset of uh, I mean, well, I mean, F is Lipschitz implies F is C0. So, obviously, because of what we are able to claim from the Lipschitz property is more than what we can claim from the continuity property of the right hand side, um, you can expect that the requirement. Uh, of being Lipschitz is something more than continuity yeah so what is this Lipschitz condition right so what is this Lipschitz condition uh, it basically says that there exists some constant which is the Lipschitz constant positive such that uh, norm of fx minus fy is less than or equal to L times norm of x minus y for all x and y in this domain D. Okay, so as you can see, this is in fact, you know, looks like a smoothness condition, it looks like a differentiability condition, in fact, right? Because this is how you define um, differentiability, right? This is how you define differentiability. Um, because if you look at this uh, carefully 
you will see that um, you know differentiability at any point x you know so so if how would i define uh, say df dx is something like this limit as h goes to 0 fx plus h minus fx divided by h all right so this so the fact that the norms are bounded like this and the denominator is obviously x plus h minus x so therefore, I could use this to somehow get a bound on this limit, yeah, which means that the somehow I can say that the differential exists. Yeah. So therefore, the Lipschitz condition is a sort of a smoothness condition and obviously more than continuity. Yeah, obviously more than continuity. Okay. So until now, we have always been looking at systems like these where the right hand sides are Lipschitz. Hmm? Even though I have not, I may not have explicitly stated it everywhere, uh, but we are, yeah. And why? Because this guarantees unique existence of unique solutions. Okay, and this is a rather important thing for us. Okay, now, uh, now the thing is that. Um, we want to switch our focus to something that's a little bit different and why okay so so i'm going to say there is a shift of focus to non unique solutions okay there's a shift of focus to non-unique solutions and why the question would be why hmm? let's think about this suppose i do have finite time convergence I'm, I'm not going to prove anything i'm just going to argue it hmm? so suppose i have finite time convergence typically what would you expect that uh, if you remember even in asymptotic convergence what do you say or asymptotic stability what do you say you have stability obviously that's one so i'm not going to go into that and then you have convergence right what does the convergence say it says that if you there exists a, a delta ball around the origin from which if you start all your solutions will converge to the origin okay so all points within the open neighborhood around the origin will converge to the origin all right so this is in fact the claim of asymptotic convergence yeah now um, as you can imagine a finite time convergence would also have a similar game that, that not just from one point but from a set of points I say around the origin you will converge to the origin right so uh, so what you can say is finite time convergence would imply a set of initial ah, sorry conditions around the origin will converge to it in important thing is in finite time this is the important thing. earlier everything was happening in infinite time so actually it was uh, it was not ha you already understand that the real numbers does not contain infinity so but all the convergence was happening as t goes to infinity t goes to infinity right so the convergence was actually you know so and then until t goes to infinity you are always very close to the origin but not actually at the origin yeah but not actually at the origin therefore it was asymptotic right so in the sense that however much you increase time you actually are never going to reach zero itself you're always going to reach somewhere very close to zero yeah? and depending on where you chose to stop it was humanly impossible to see infinite time um, we are fine i mean we just 
uh, go somewhere very close to the origin but mathematically you are not at the origin okay and this is a very subtle difference that we need to understand on the other hand if you are converging in finite time to the origin then it is humanly possible right because now you are talking about t going to a real number a finite real number and in that finite real time you will actually go to the origin exactly you will exactly go to the origin so now in some finite real time from all these different initial conditions so suppose i make a uh, state space yeah say i make a two dimensional state space right i mean just a phase plane image like we are used to doing okay on this phase plane right uh, i may have many different initial conditions doing this yeah all these different initial conditions yeah starting from some neighborhood right starting from some neighborhood of the origin right starting from some neighborhood of the origin actually converge to the origin in finite time yeah so this is a phase plane portrait i hope you understand that this is a phase plane portrait all right so so what does it mean now what does it mean as i flow forward in time starting from different initial conditions i reach the origin right so if i look at these trajectories backward in time right i i make my time negative time so t to minus t i replace t by minus t in this differential equation right then starting from origin i have so many different paths i can take right all right now this was not possible in the asymptotic case why was this not possible in the asymptotic case because you in fact never reach the origin at all you were always very close to the origin so so i mean it would be i mean i would really zoom this in and then i would still be like if i did an asymptotic law i would be something like this something like this something really close but never really going to the origin okay so in the asymptotic case there was no question of starting from the origin and in backward time going at dif into different trajectories but here because i reach the origin in finite time yeah in finite time therefore i can if i look at the backward in time trajectories i have started at the origin and gone to different points right this is exactly non unique trajectories yeah this is exactly non unique trajectories what is the meaning of non unique trajectories starting at the same initial condition i can get multiple trajectories okay so this is so finite so what is the point finite time convergence definitely leads to non unique system trajectories in backward time okay in backward time you're guaranteed to have non unique trajectories and the important thing is this is not allowed by lipschitz f of x okay if you have a lipschitz right hand side for the differential equation then this is not possible okay and therefore our focus focus is on non lipschitz
right hand sides yeah but even there it is not too non lipschitz we still don't like to work with uh, uh functions that have i mean differential equations which have right hand side which are completely uh, non lipschitz everywhere and all of that okay so we we still restrict our attention at least for this treatment to uh, very special cases yeah so what is this special cases so what is our requirement so that's that's the important thing we need to sort of characterize and understand carefully as to what is the requirement here okay so so this is the system so what do we require mm, informally i will say we will the requirement so in fact i will write the differential equation that we are dealing with first the notation so y dot of t is f of y of t so what is it that we require in words and then we'll formalize it in mathematical terms and right? we require uh, uniqueness in forward time everywhere but at the origin okay so we will require uniqueness in forward time a because the issue was in backward time that backward time i definitely cannot have uniqueness because i'm looking at finite time convergence but i can require uniqueness in forward time so i need to have some kind of lipschitz property and i need to uh, i cannot have this property at the origin okay i cannot have this lipschitzian property at the origin which is the equilibrium by the way so by default all our discussions revolve around uh, the zero equilibrium hmm? okay so uniqueness in forward time everywhere but at the origin is what we require and that's what we formalize okay now what is it what is the system now we say that f is again a map from rn to rn um c0 in uh, d which contains the origin f locally lipschitz on d with the origin removed sorry yeah d with the origin removed and of course we have f 0 equal to 0 to guarantee that origin is in fact equilibrium and equilibrium okay all right great all right so now uh, we don't go into too much detail we already know that uh, solution exists because of continuity of f right so by continuity which is in the entire domain i solutions do exist okay uh, and further uh, so so this is what i will uh, actually write here what are the guarantees from the above assumptions solutions exist uh right for all x in d that is all initial conditions in d and further solutions unique um for all x0 in yeah so this obviously the existence of solutions for all initial conditions comes from here and the uniqueness only for d removing the origin comes from here okay right 
great great all right i hope that's clear okay so now we are once we have this setup we are in a uh, good place to define the notion of finite time stability okay what does it say it says that zero is finite time stable for one if uh, you have a few things right um, if there exists a neighborhood inside our domain d so again let me be careful zero is contained in both of course and there also exists a function which is called the settling time function on this neighborhood yeah such that you have these things happening a the settling time function evaluates to zero if you plug in zero as the argument okay. so if, if the state is if the initial condition state is zero so so the way this is stated that this uh, settling time is a function of initial condition okay so if the initial condition is zero obviously there's nothing to do it's an equilibrium so settling time function is zero and t x zero goes to zero as x zero goes to zero right so obviously i mean it doesn't say it's monotonic or anything but it says that if your initial conditions are going to zero then it is but natural to expect that the settling time function also goes to zero right? then b uh, you have that uh, for all initial conditions in this neighborhood which with again the origin removed uh, the solutions which are denoted say x t 0 x 0 are uniquely are unique on this interval A unique I'll be I'll, I'll go over this a bit more carefully a unique on this interval right and for the x t 0 x 0 is not equal to 0 on times in this interval but if I take my time going to tx0 exactly, then xt0 x0 is actually 0. Right? What does this statement mean? The statement means that if you have initial conditions which are not at the origin because we do not have uniqueness from the origin, then these are the solutions. Solutions are uh, depend on the initial time which is 0 and initial condition which is x0 right? so if the solutions are unique on 0 tx0 so it's open on the tx0 side obviously and it they are never 0 here but as time goes exactly to tx0 then the solution actually goes precisely to 0 okay 
and the last and final one is exactly the Lyapunov stability condition right so this is the Lyapunov this is the same because this has got nothing to do with finite time or infinite time this is just Lyapunov stability which says that for all epsilon positive there exists delta positive such that uh, if your initial conditions begin again in a delta neighborhood of origin removing the origin then the solutions remain in an epsilon neighborhood of origin all right solutions remain in an epsilon neighborhood of origin again for the same you use the same time settling time function yeah so the notion of settling time actually justifies its name right because it is exactly the time in which you go to zero right and of course there is also a requirement for Lyapunov stability right so finite time stability contains the notion of Lyapunov stability as well right so so and you see the only difference between typical asymptotic stability is, is two things one is that t doesn't go to infinity it just goes to a tx0 it's a settling time function right and further the uh, you are always uh, in, in each of these parts of this definition you are always excluding the origin where the solution is not unique right so everywhere you see the origin is excluded from the definition okay all right so and then therefore whenever you go to origin also it is in, shown in the limit okay because again uh, since you do not have uniqueness from the origin you um, cannot really talk about limits and convergence and all these notions uh, when you're not when you're at the origin okay so so that's what's the definition of finite time stability and we will in fact continue to do uh, more in this direction yeah